Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and go through the quiz and then uh, move on to uh, maybe the assignments or the labs. And this, this is a problem. The first problem was to find the, um, the bug, right? So, and we, we did this in lecture together. And, uh, so I, I just copied the code that, was pre that I presented in lecture. And, um, and uh, the issue here is that we're getting a segmentation fault. So the, the program is trying to access uh, an illegal memory location. And um, that's occurring because um, I, I here reaches zero. I reaches zero. And, uh, and so that uh, zero minus one is minus one. And, and uh, that's an illegal index for, um, for the array. Uh, so that's where the, um, the, the segmentation fault occurs. And so the, the fix is um, just to make sure that i is uh, greater than zero. We don't need to go to, to zero. You know, we, this is, if we, if we get to zero, uh, then we know that um, there's nothing in front of the number that, uh, that could be uh, bigger than this, there's, because we're at the front of the, the array. So that was the fix. All you had to do is um, add this condition here. And I'm not going to get back. We looked at this algorithm already. We already went through this. So this is a, a review. Uh, problem two, provide an implementation of this function is strictly increasing. And that means the vector is going up, right? It's like got numbers two, four, seven, eight, like that. But it doesn't have repeating numbers. It doesn't have two, four, four, seven, eight. It, it's, we don't allow two numbers next to each other like that. That's not strictly increasing. It's increasing or it's non-decreasing, I guess you say it. So we need to provide an implementation of that. And, um, you know, it looks like this. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the vector Let's, you know, let's just let's put some stuff down. There's two, four, seven, eleven, like that. That's a that's a vector that um, that is uh, strictly um, increasing. Yeah, here's a vector that's um, uh, not strictly increasing. So what we want to do is we want to we want to look at each element and make sure that each element is uh, smaller than the element that comes after it, or look at each element and make sure the element before it is is smaller than itself. So we could do it either way, and uh, let's 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 verify that each element, say like two, is bigger than the next one four, and that four is bigger. I'm sorry, two is smaller than four. And that four, that three, that four rather is smaller than three. Well, that'll fail there. So we should catch that. So I will range from I will range from uh, zero to not the last index, but one before the last index. Because we're going to, each number that we look at, we're going to look at the one after it. So we don't want to go to the last index because there's nothing after it. And uh, so let's check what we're at i. So if we check a v of i, we want to make sure that v of i is uh, strictly less than v of i plus 1. So that, that means it's good. That means it's good. But, you know, we have to check that for every one. So what, what we wanted, the trick here is not to check to see if, the, if that particular pair is good. We want to check to see if it's bad. Because if, it's, if that particular pair is bad, then we're going to return false. Otherwise, we've got to check all the other pairs. So this isn't the check we want to do. This is, this is the condition we want to be true. So the opposite of that would be this.
So here we would return false. At this point, we know that uh, that the vector is not strictly increasing. And if we if we pass through the loop and we never find a bad pair of neighbors, then we can uh, then we can return true that the vector is strictly increasing. Any questions on that one? Can you do what the other lines did? Like, um, can we go? No, no, you can't do that. You can't return true because let's suppose because that means you would return true for this vector because two is less than four. Okay, return true. The whole vector is strictly increasing. Well, that would be wrong. So you cannot return true. You have to return false. You have to check every pair of neighbors and make sure that every pair of neighbors satisfies the condition that the earlier one is less than the later one. You can make it more complicated than this, that's for sure. You can make it messy, or more, but this is the simplest way to express it. Huh? Yeah. Oh, then show just show it to me. Yeah, if you know, I'm we're likely made mistakes on grading this. I mean, I had to grade 55 of these quizzes. So, please show me your paper at the end of the class. Um. See, the test case here, look, the test case doesn't test for this particular, this, uh, let me show you a failure. This, this fails, of course, but look, this one fails as well. Uh, but the, we're not testing that case where, you know, it's, it's not decreasing, but it's not strictly increasing. It's just, say, increasing. We let it flatten out. So the test case is missing. So the problem is to uh, to come up with a test case that that tests that, and that'll look like this. Create a vector. Let's say it's v2. And let's let's pass in two negative twos. And that would be a test. Now that should fail. That is not. It's not strictly increasing. So you have to, um, you want the function to return false. So we need to negate the return value when we pass it into assert. All right, this one here, um, it contains algorithm, right? You have to do a linear search called a linear search. You want to see if k is in v. Okay, v is a vector of integers, and k is some integer. So when we call the function contains, if k is in v, we want to return true. If k is not in v, then we return false. Once again, we, we have to range through the vector. And uh, this is the um, this is the loop that does that. Let's look at every valid. We have to look at every valid index, unless we find k, and then we're done. So if if v of i now we're letting we're letting i range across to every valid index in the vector. Okay, i is going to start at 0, then it's going to go to 1, then it's going to go to 2, and then it's going to, if the last valid index is 99, i will reach 99. So we're going to check every valid index. Well, not exactly, because here we, we're going to return. If we find it at i, then we know, hey, k is in there. We don't need to check the rest of the indices. Just forget every, the rest of the loop. Let's just return true. k is in the vector. But if we, if we range through every valid index, 
and we don't find any i such that v of i is k, then we know that k is not in there. Try to come up with this for those who didn't do well on the quiz. You know, write down the question and go to sleep and wake up the next day, and pull the question out, and then write this down. Figure it out. Write that down. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. This is more efficient than I++. But actually, maybe the compiler just does the same thing. That's all right. In this expression, they make no difference. The two different ones, they're equivalent in this expression. Although internally, um, this is less efficient. No, so any, you could do, you can do this in the for loop. You can take i and replace it by uh, i times three. It's just some statement that executes at the bottom of the loop. You know that when you get to the bottom of the loop, which is, you know, this, 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 this brace right here, that's the bottom of the loop. When you hit that, you do the, the statement that's in the third slot in this for expression. Well, yeah, I don't, you can't be that general because if we did, you've got to be careful because if, if this is inside of another expression, then uh, this will have a different effect uh, than this. But if it's, if it's by itself, then it doesn't matter. It's just if it's in a, a larger expression. I don't know what this does. I mean, this, this is not very nice. This is uh, kind of a crazy uh, example. But if we put something like uh, J in there, or let's say P, that would be make more sense. You know, if P++, plus plus, if p were 1 coming into this expression, p plus plus times 2 would be 2. We would assign 2 to i, and then we would increment p. But if we did it the other way, then we increment p first, when now p becomes 4, and then, f I mean 2 rather, and then 2 times 2 becomes 4, so i becomes 4 instead of 2. So when the plus plus operator is used in the context of a larger expression, then it becomes significant. But it's so common in a for loop to see um, I plus plus. I mean, this is the most common uh, for loop there is right there. And in this case, it doesn't matter the order. Yeah. That's an excellent question. Let's look at that. What if we put the return false in here? Yeah, you don't even need the, that's right. But let's, let's put it as an else and see what it looks like. Let's analyze this, this loop here. Let's suppose that V equals this, 3, 1, and uh, 4. And uh, let's, call, let's call contains, you know, V.contains. Let's call that with, um, with 1. What does v.contains return? Should return true, right? Because 1 is in v. But let's see, we start the loop with i set to 0. We initialize i to 0. And then we do the test. Is 0 less than v 
dot size. Is zero less than three? Yeah. Zero is less than three. So that means we go into the loop. Remember, this expression is done at the end. So, so v i is zero. So if v of zero is k, well, remember k is one here. k is one. And v of zero is uh, three. So v of zero is three. So is three equal to one? No, three does not equal one. So if three, so we don't return true. But that means we return false. So we're returning false. But we haven't even checked the other. Well, all we did was look at v of zero. We didn't look at v of one or v of two or any of the others. So th this is a common mistake. A lot of people make this mistake. Okay, let's, um, now this one is the, uh, the binary search. So now we want to implement the contains function, but now the, the vector v is in uh, ascending order. It's strictly increasing, actually. We say strictly increasing. And so uh, we can use binary search to make the search go faster. If it wasn't increasing or decreasing, we couldn't use binary search. We'd have to check every number. Well, we don't have to check every number because they're all in order. So what we, what we do is... We have these these bookends. We have we have um, we have i and j say. And uh, let's set um, yeah. I'm just going to leave it like that. Let's let i be zero and j be v dot size. So i is at the beginning, j is in the at the end. And uh, let's just do a, let's just, I'm just going to start jotting things down here. We need to calculate M, which is um, I plus J uh, divided by 2. And uh, now we're going to check to see, does, uh, is V of M, is K, is K V of M? If k is, um, if v of m is k, then we're done. We found k. It's in there. Return true. So m is the middle of that vector, right? Exactly. m is the middle. Actually, it's m is the middle between i and j. But for, th for the first pass into the loop, it will be the middle of the vector because i is at the beginning and j is at the end. But in the second pass through the loop, m won't be the middle of the vector. It'll be the middle between i and j. Yeah. It da always goes down. And we, we don't say rounding, we say truncating. So if the value is 3.99999, the value is 3. It chops, it truncates, it discards the 0.99999. And I wasn't looking for precision in this, by the way. I just wanted to see if you got the idea here. You know, I wasn't looking for precision. If you're off by one in this, in your answer to this problem, it's full credit. So you don't have time to, you know, during the quiz to think through all the details. But to make sure that you understand the concept of how to express binary search as, as an algorithm. You mean like, like this? No, this is this is good enough. This is like a pseudo code. Just just trying to get the idea down here. We don't need to. Doesn't have to be syntactically correct. I just want the idea to be there. So if um, let's suppose that uh, v of m uh, doesn't equal k. Let's uh, let's suppose instead that um, that v of m is uh, is bigger than k. If V of M is bigger than K, 
then uh, that means that uh, k is somewhere between you know i and the middle of the vector now. And so we want to slide j down. Otherwise, k is uh, k is bigger than uh, v of m, and we want to slide i up. And at some point, we have to, you know, return uh, false that we didn't find it. So that's when uh, when i and j get close together. So maybe we'll do something like this. So we have m, we'll do, let's do this. If j minus i, well, j minus i is bigger than zero, when i and j become the same thing, then we'll return false. And you know, it's I I need to work on it a little more to get exact, but this is essentially it right here. You know, maybe it's not right on the exactly the way it needs to be, but uh, maybe we have to subtract one up here or something like that. I, I don't want to get into that detail at this point. This is what I want to see. That's what I want to see. So we have this M, and M is the midpoint between I and J. We slide J down or slide I up based on where K falls in relation to M. And we do that until I and J close in on each other and they become the same thing, and then we're finished. I think this works, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried about the semicolons. You know, just just to want to show you just how to do it in 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 roughed out pseudocode. This is another way. Maybe this is easier to look at. If v of m is k, then return true. Else, if v of m is greater than k, then set j to m. Else, set i to m. Maybe that's easier to look at. So a lot of people got this actually. You know, so. It's a binary search algorithm. It's going to have a basic algorithm. You should know this. Now, also should know about sorting. And then uh, let's do that. Any other questions on this? No? Okay. My sort. Do you want to talk about my sort? Sure. I'll probably put it on the final. Yes, <laughs> okay. Okay.
So we want, uh, V doesn't have, the elements of V won't necessarily be in sorted order, but we want to put them in the sorted order. Oh, sorry, yeah. All right, so the elements of V aren't necessarily in sorted order, but so what we want to do is put them in the sorted order. So if we pass in, say, 2, 6, minus 3, you know, that's um, not in sorted order. Now if we call my sort on V, then it should be in sorted order afterwards. So it should look like the following. It should have uh, V of 0 should be minus 3 and uh, V of 1 and V of 2 should be what um, 2 and 6. And it's not a great example. Let's uh, let's let's put in a couple more points here. So the result should be uh, minus 3, 1, 2, 4, and 6. So the test fails. Well, we don't do anything, so it should fail. Good. All right, we got the failing test. Now let's make the test pass. All right, so how are we going to sort this? So um, there's, a, there's so many different ways of doing this, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at an inefficient way to sort. So there's some very, uh, there's some more, there's sophisticated ways to sort that to make the sorting go quick. So when you're sorting a small number of values, it doesn't matter. But if you were sorting, say, a million values, there's a big difference between the inefficient sort that we are going to, sh that I'll show you, and an efficient sort. So sorting is uh, one of the early first problems that computer scientists worked on when computers were first invented. What is the, an efficient way to sort a large number of values? And this is very common. It's computer systems internally are constantly sorting things or doing something that's equivalent to sorting. Uh, so uh, <coughs> let's look at the, uh, let's, let's, let's develop a strategy. So the strategy is going to be like this. We're going to take We'll take i, we're going to range it through the vector, let's range through the vector, and so for each um, For each i that we consider, let's do something for each value in the vector. Let's make sure that 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 all the values that um, precede. Did I spell precede wrong? Precede. Is that like two E's without a, this, this is not right, right? I'm a very bad speller. Is that, is that how you spell precede?
Like that. Oh, I had it right the first time. Okay. So, um, this the strategy. So it, it's kind of like that is ascending. Remember, is strictly ascending. What we did is we went and looked at each on a pair of numbers. It's not exactly like that, but a little bit like that. We're going to examine each position in the vector starting at the beginning and making sure that everything before the position is, um, is smaller than where I'm currently at. But actually, um, we'll want to start at 1. Because nothing precedes um, v of 0. I mean, you know, whatever in v of 0 is, is done. So we're going to start at 1. So it'll be something like, you know, what, what we got to do here. Actually, the, all these, the, the, the basic sorting algorithms all uh, involve nested loops. So we have a loop within a loop. You know what? I think I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do this differently. Make sure that v of i is is smaller. Sorry, is smaller than all values that follow it. That's what the way I want to do it. That means I I've got to go from zero to size minus one. Okay, so we we'll look at v of zero. Is v of zero smaller than all the elements after it? And do that all the way up to um, one before the last. Because once you're at the last, there's nothing after it anymore. So we don't have to look at that. So that means we've got another loop. Let's call let's index that by j. And we're going to start at um, i plus 1. And we have to go to the end of the vector. So there's the algorithm. So we're gonna we're gonna start at zero. We're gonna go all the way up to one min one last one one from the end. And then uh, for each of those values, we're gonna look at all the values after it, and uh, make sure that where we're at is smaller than everything that follows it. So if v of j, if it turns out that v of j is actually smaller than the v of i that we're looking at, uh, then, uh, then we want to swap v of j and v of i. So we're at v of i. We want v of i. We want the number that's at i. We want that number to be smaller than all the numbers after it. But if we find j, and j is going to range across all the numbers after i. That's what this for loop is. j is ranging across all the numbers after i. So, so we've got to start at i plus 1. That's the first number after i. And then we've got to go all the way up to 1 less than v dot size. So we have strictly less than v dot size. So we're going to look at every number after i. So j is going to range across all numbers that come after i. And if we find one that's smaller than the one in i, then we're going to swap those two. And then we're going to continue. Question? Is um, j equals i plus 1 the same as j equals 1? Is that no, 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 no. Because this loop here, look at this, this loop. D depends on i, and i is ranging in this high, in this uh, enclosing loop. So i is going to be, you know, 
different. See, the, the out, look at the outer loop here. Let's suppose that v dot size, let's suppose the vector is 10 elements. That means the outer loop is going to run nine times. First, it's going to run with i equals 0. Then it's going to run with i equals 1. And then it's going to go all the way to, it's going to run all the way up to when i is equal to 9. So for each value of i between 0 and 9, we're going to run the inner loop. So when i is 7, we want j to be 8. Because we're, the, the, pro, the procedure that we decided on here is we're only going to look, when, if we're considering slot 7, we're only going to look at the, at the slots after that slot. We don't look at the slots before it. We already looked at those. We put those in order already. We know that all the values prior to 7 have already been, you know, made small. Made smaller than everything after where I'm at. Is that clear? still fuzzy, right? It takes a while. You have to work on this on your own, by the way. You're, you're not going to get it in lecture. Well, maybe you are. I mean, that'd be great. I wouldn't be able to get it in lecture. I'd have to go home and, you know, hash it out and put the algorithm aside, try to write it myself. And there's many, many ways of doing a sorting algorithm. This is just one way. So I, I recommend that you experiment with other procedures to see if you can use different, uh, different algorithms to, uh, to do a sort. I think we're, we're done. As soon as we figure out how to swap V of I and V of J, I think we're done. Now, here's the analogy for swapping, right? You've got a glass of milk and a glass of wine. And you want, a pour, you, want, you want the wine to be in the other glass and the milk to be in, you know, you want the milk to be in the wine glass and the wine to be in the milk glass. How are you going to do it? Well, you need a third glass. And you're going to pour the milk in the third glass and then you can pour the wine where the milk was and then you take the third glass and pour, you know, the wine where the milk, the whatever. <laughs> you, got <it>. you, got <laughs> you got it, right? <laughs> All right, so... We need a temp. Let's put V of I in temp. That means V of I is safely preserved. Okay, we can clobber V of I now. We can put V of J into V of I. All right, so V of I is set. Now we need to... to uh, to get the, the temporary value put into V of J. That's counterintuitive. I always end up mixing the milk and the wine together and just have to throw everything away. Yeah, just, no, just kidding. Huh? I got it? Okay. You know, you have to think slowly and carefully. You've Got to slow up your mind here and and, and sort of pull it apart. You, there's there's a certain style of thinking and analysis that you need to do. You got to be creative, kind of open and experimental and guessing, and then you got to do the other way and you have to be very critical and uh, and 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 uh, machine like and say, let's verify. Does this work? Okay, here it goes. All tests passed. But these tests aren't that good. I mean, that's one test, right? We should have other tests. You know, you, you need to give it all kinds of crazy tests. You know, what happens if, you know, everything is, uh, you know, whatever. You know, does it, does it, does it break like that?
No, there's no negate. Whoops. Oh, I called it V of one, didn't I? I'll, I'll change. Wait, it's really slow here today. The network is. Gonna slow up. Oh. Okay, so that means V that means nine should be in the last slot. You know, you should throw things in that, that you think are going to um fail. Try to break the the program. Anyway, that's that's enough I think. Let's um uh oh, there we go. Looks like there's some a lot of network delay. Question? Um, this is for increasing. Yeah. 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 Actually that that's an open question. You know, maybe on the final I want it decreasing. Um, I, you know, I'm going to guess that, um, this is the only place that seems to be relevant, right? That, that's my intuition because I, there, nowhere else do we do any kind of comparison. That's it right there. So what else would you do? I mean, would you, maybe you would start at one and go to size instead of, my, no. That doesn't change. This has got to be it. You know, another thing that you need to think about is, is the inequality, you know, greater than or equal to, maybe. But actually, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. But you need to think about it. Looks like I'm getting a network failure here, so. I think that's a solution there, just a very simple sign change. crashing <coughs> uh, does anybody want to talk about the optional project that extra that's extra credit yeah. <laughs> I, d I don't know yet <laughs> I'm going to come up with a number later on yeah I mean, it's great if you can do that. I mean, do do the extra credit. Yeah. I mean, it'll help a lot if you're struggling in the class and make that extra effort to do this. Yeah, I mean, if you can do tic-tac-toe, that's fantastic. That's great. Um, but there are simpler games, like guess a number game, for instance. That's you can do that, but I, I'm not gonna. You know, if I see someone submit a tic-tac-toe problem, and, and I'm gonna give probably give them more credit than a guessing the number game. Yeah. Uh, what? A quiz game, I think, is good. Yeah, a quiz game is all right. I, I like tic-tac-toe better because it's. Um, harder. Yeah, it's harder. Yeah, that's it. That's the word. <laughs> It has a lot of logic. You, I mean, there's a lot of um, problems that you have to think about there. Do you want to talk about the tic-tac-toe problem, or do you want to not do that? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for pointing that out. I want to mention that. Assignment six only has one exercise. So what I did, I went into Blackboard. It was a mistake. I, I couldn't delete the other exercises in Blackboard. So I set their value to zero. So you just ignore exercise two and three for assignment six in Blackboard. Huh? I did have a question, but I don't know if you want to talk about it. What's that? 
the difference in between a regular vector and then a constant vector? A constant vector? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, Let me think about that. Yeah. I added it. Yeah. If it, if you don't see it there, tell me again. I I added it just very recently. There must be something I'm forgetting to talk about. Isn't there something? Yeah. Oh. Oh, you're kidding. I have an optional project and an optional assignment. Oh, that's a mistake then. Yeah, just one of those. Yeah, they're both the same thing. Sorry. Then you had the psychological uh, test for X2 points too. Huh? You had a psychological test for uh, Oh yeah, some people took the uh, took the uh, the survey, the psychological creativity survey. And uh, you've already been granted extra credit for that, okay? So I don't think that's and I think I said 2% of the grade or something like that. So that that helps as well. So that's already been recorded. If you, if you did the survey and you didn't get um, a check for that, I think it's just a check mark in, your, in the grade book. So if, if, I, if I missed you, let me know. So we have one more meeting before the final. You missed me. Huh? You missed me. All right. All right, let me catch that then. Is that... A uh, review on Monday. And uh, if you come with questions on Monday, that would be great. And I'll talk about what's on the, you know, on the final. And I'll, because I have to write the final. And usually when I talk about things in lecture, I remember it and then I put them on the on the exam. So you've already seen that. So Monday's a good day to uh, to get to discuss with me about uh, your ideas about what you want to see on the final, because I'll, I'll take suggestions too. All right? Okay, that's it.